Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to When We Feel Like It O'Clock. This is B Pow, and I'm Pow, Pro Wisdom, and this is my bro B, Bork, Joe Bork. And uh, we are here to do some series picks for you. Might as well. We got playoffs coming up, baseball playoffs, good times. Hockey ended last night. We had Tampa Bay to win. All well, I did, anyways. Joe was a little disappointed. He wanted it to go seven, but. <laughs> it wasn't. I didn't think it was about to, and it certainly didn't. Uh, as far as the uh, individual picks for today, we have too many for our uh, clients today to give individual picks. So we thought, what the heck? Let's do some series plays. So you can do some futures. We're going to give you some free future picks today. Uh, something I usually don't give to clients anyway, so we can give it out for free because you guys are awesome for coming here and watching our stuff all the time, subscribing and hitting the bell and uh, commenting on the bottom. So we're going to throw you some uh, some series picks. Let's start with uh, Houston versus Min Houston Astros versus Minnesota Twins. Joe, what are you looking at for this series? Well, it really hurts the um, twins that Josh Donaldson, we found out, is not going to be able to go since he's been huge. Um, the top prospect they did allow uh, to come in to replace him in Kirillov is an absolute stud, it seems, of a prospect that um, he's going to basically just step right in he seems like a guy that can be a Cronenworth Bohm-esque guy that just starts hitting right away but this is the postseason so it's not easy to step right up have your first ABs be in the postseason but uh we'll see uh most likely what he's going to be able to do uh Kepler I love they've just been having a more consistent hitting they went six and four in their last 10 Houston won four and six. They were on a four or excuse me, a three game losing streak to end the season. Um, so I just think Houston, unfortunately, has been disappointing this year and their hitting has been disappointing where the twins have had more of a pick me up mentality. Um, I think that's going to carry them over. And what's also going to carry them over is the big addition of Maeda, who's pitching the first game. And getting guys like Rich Hill, who's still trucking along at the age of 39, um, and Trevor May, who's good in the pen, picking up a guy like Maeda, who is a head case at times, but a uh, uh, Pineda, excuse me, um, Michael Pineda, not Maeda, uh, who's but 2-0, and came back, pitched okay, um, and he has some experience. Romo did very well. They kind of just picked up the little guys that all have contributed really well to their team. Um, so I think getting those great small pickups and then you would hope Donaldson after this three gamer is able to come back. I think that's still going to put them over the edge in uh, this series. I think it'll be a three game series, especially now with Donaldson out, but I still think the twins will win. Yeah. Um, I, well, I said that Houston was going to have a rough season, but that was when there was going to be fans. Uh, that was going to be tough. Uh, the embarrassment. And, and they still had a rough season because they're an under 500 playoff team. Yeah. They're 29 and 31. Yeah. 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 And that, and it's still, it's the shame of being, no, waking up every day knowing you're playing on a cheating team. Uh, that I think that really affects the energy of a team. Not to mention, it's probably going to be a while before they are able to get they're going to have a difficult time getting players to come play for them, I think. I think there's going to be players that are, like, telling their agents, I'm not going to Houston. I, I would be. I like if, I, if there's any way around it, I don't want to go to Houston. Potentially, yeah, because all those guys had some of the highest, um, like, regards. Like, they would talk about how much everyone loved Bregman and Altuve before it. So it depends – you want to win they still have a good roster on paper so it depends where your uh, guidelines are going into your offseason yeah i said like it's not going to take away everybody but it will take away the pool more than it would have been had that not gone down oh, I agree with that. yeah that makes yeah, sense for sure so that was kind of my reason why i thought houston if it would before kobe hit and all that i said i think it's possible they don't even make the playoffs and as you said they Almost didn't. So uh, let's go to Chicago, the Chicago White Sox and the Oakland Athletics. This is a very interesting series. And from what I have seen from people that 
prognosticate and predict these things. It's pretty split by most people. What do you got on this one? Yeah, I personally, because of, I would have thought it was more split. These are two teams I pay attention to a lot because of one of the sites, OT Heroics, uh, teams I talk about on the podcast. Um, and 2-8 and eight to round out the season, C started getting hit around more for the White Sox. Uh, Geo had his no-hitter that brought down his overall stats, but he got hit around more than uh, last year, but he's still going to pitch really solid. I think it's just he still didn't play up to his last year's numbers. Dane Dunning has no experience. He pitched well this year, has no experience. Either does Foster, uh, Fry. Like they have a lot of guys. And then Geo has an undisclosed day to day injury and also is really struggling. Ren- Rendon has never really figured it out for them. And they're going to need more pitching to step up. Uh, in order to figure this out, because Croquet is going to be great out of the bullpen. It seems like the rookie just knows how to deal, and we know Keuchel is going to probably be second or third in some boat because nobody's beating Bieber. So you got him and Geo, but I just think with how Chris Bassett has stepped up big time for the A's, that makes them be three deep instead of two deep in their rotation because they got Bassett, they got Luzardo, and then after struggling to start, Manaya really started having a better second half of this 60 game season. So I think all those things considered, that would make me put the A's over the top, especially when you have Frankie Montas and Mike Miner, who have had good moments in their careers and are just struggling this year. So you figure with two guys like that, you have a much better chance of one of them figuring it out and giving you something, maybe even as a long man. And then you have that extra wild card piece that becomes a Swiss Army knife uh, type player for you, potentially. So that's why I also think with some key additions, they made like Lestella, who's done good, and Jake Lamb, who's done pretty solid since they brought him over. The A's always know how to make those minor, very what people consider minute additions that become much bigger because they just know how to perfectly place players into a situation and lineup. And because the uh, White Sox are Edwin and uh, Jose Abreu and um, and basically uh, since Robert fell off, uh, Jimenez uh, dependent, uh, they, they need to have other guys pick it back up again if they want to have a chance against the A's because even with guys struggling uh, – Average wise, they have hitters that have still been driving in runs and doing pretty good with production, and their pitching goes deeper than the White Sox. Like I said, I think that game will go three games again this series, but I think it'll go to the A's because their pitching, like I said, is three deep. So they'll have a better chance in game three than the um, White Sox will. Yeah, I think Chicago, Chicago has a tendency to catch lightning in the bottom of a bottle with their hitters, too. Uh, so they probably will win. I'm maybe not as bullish as on the A's here as you are. It's a very tough one. It's fady for me for the series. But I probably lean the A's, mostly because they just seem to – they're one of those teams that just seem to be able to find a way to get it done. Uh, they, there's a great energy in that organization altogether. Uh, winning energy in that organization altogether. Um, where am I going here? Okay. Oh, well, I should remember this one pretty quick because we have my Toronto Blue Jays going up against the Tampa Bay Rays. Here in Canada, it's interesting. They, they, they put a spin on it or something about Toronto would, should rather play the Tampa because they know that team and – all of those sort of things like that. And I, I was like, okay, if you say so. But uh, I'm not sure. I like going up against that pitch. And what do you th- say about the Toronto Tampa Bay series? No, I think you guys are the eighth seed that has a chance to win one game. But that's because you got Ryu, who we know is a very good pitcher. And uh, Walker's having a very good season. And they're going up against Glass now, respectively. And then um, Morton, who both are very good pitchers in their own right, but not – as tight this year as they normally are with their stuff. So they kind of have been alternating forces this year, like I said before the podcast, where one has a good week and then the other has a good next week. So if that kind of continues, then Ryu or Walker could probably be one of them to get you. But the 
the chances are you wouldn't be having – actually, no, you would have to have Ryu beat him because I just remembered you wouldn't have a chance to get to Walker unless if Shoemaker wins today and then you have um, lose tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, you would have to have Ryu actually win. So I think you have a chance to get to one game, though, because – Ryu against Glassnail, I would give you guys that pitching matchup because Glassnail had a very good last year, has been good this year, but is still trying to fully uh, hone in consistency. And I think that's probably what we're going to see next year when he's probably going to really uh, hit the stride running uh, as he kind of had a great year, um, first great year in the league, fell off a bit in the 60, but still pitched solid, and then really kind of hits it next year. So I think you guys have a chance of winning one game because he might be the guy that leaves some fastball over the plate and we know your team can hit. So uh, that will be the game that you can win. And then more than in big key situations, I think as a vet would probably step up in game three and that would give it pretty handily to the Rays. I think the one game, because you guys have a lot of great fastball hitters too. Now just thinking about that as we were uh, doing the video, think would probably be glass nails the best matchup on a little bit of a struggle in year against your hitters as well to try to win that game in game yeah. two yeah. Uh, with the jays it's going to be all about hitting and uh these are young hitters first play like no well, not first i guess the second playoffs for most guerrero and bichette and then all of that uh if th if those bats are flying they can beat just about anybody so um I, I, let's say I, w I, I wouldn't be opposed to putting a small bit on the Jays for that reason because you're getting plus money on it, but I really don't see them beating Tampa at all, and I love the Jays, so what can I say? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think Tampa, and I even think it could be uh, – they could win – Toronto might not even win one. It's weird. It's, it's a difficult series to uh, yeah. uh, pick in a lot of ways. I would pick – them to not win one if glass now wasn't having an off year just because the way he pitches how he's left some over this year play to your hitter so well because you guys got young guys that just want to jump on fastballs early and if he leaves some of them over Bichette um even Goriel you got Hernandez I think he's going to be healthy um so you got a bunch of guys that can hit really well in those situations uh, especially jumping on fastball. So that's why I think that might make you win at least one, not, not at least, win one game. Excuse me, I keep forgetting the three-game series. It's so weird this year. Win one game, um, and then you make it go to the third game just to make it quote-unquote interesting. But I don't think the other games will be very close, so I don't know how interesting it'll be. It'll just be your win that one game potentially off a of glass snail. Yeah, I think the first game, Shoemaker's probably not going to pitch much. Uh, they're gonna. The Jays will use the best bullpen guys they have, and then try to roll with Ryu. The the second game, so uh, should be interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm taking Tampa. Uh, okay, Cleveland and the Cleveland Indians and the Yankees. This is offense against and some pitching. I mean, the Yankees don't have bad pitching either. So, uh, but first, especially the first game, which we really can't talk about, should be an interesting pitching matchup. But what do you have on this? I, I've seen a couple people picking Cleveland here. Um, yeah, I mean, Cleveland is the team that they're a really good team, and they have some of the best pitching in the league where the Yankees have had their hitting. They also have guys that get bit by injuries, so they have to stay healthy through the series, too. In order to beat the hitting, or uh, the hitting also from Reyes and a couple of the guys on the Indians, but also obviously just to beat the um, pitching of the Indians, you can't have some of your hitters get banged up. But you do got Ramirez on the Indians. You do have uh, Reyes who are having very solid seasons. Uh, they just have other guys like Lindor that are having lesser seasons. Um, but this is a series that I did pick the Indians in my other podcast, and I'm going to really? um, stick with them because I think they have the better through and through pitching right now. The Yankees have Garcia, who stepped up, but you have Plesak on the Indians. You have obviously, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I knew that was going to happen. You have Bieber on the Indians, who won the pitching triple crown. 
So, I mean, I would give the pitching nod ever so slightly to the Indians. And you also have Carlos Carrasco, who looked like he's clicked it fully back in this year, which great to see for him coming back from cancer and everything. Feels like he seems to have it fully back, and he's a hell of a pitcher when he's kicking at full gas. He has some of the nastiest stuff in the game. So I believe that the pitching matchup goes to them, which is why I think that'll put them over the hump because I see this going three game. But I just think the starter, Cleveland's going to throw out there in the third game, which is likely to be police sack because I think they said Carrasco probably pitched game two is going to be, I think, Zach, please, that's going to be superior to whoever the Yankees throw out there. So that's why I'm picking Cleveland. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. I kind of, I, had, I was leaning the Yankees. Um, I just find, I just, because of their bats, but you're right. I mean, Cle- Cleveland's uh, pitching is pretty fantastic. And uh, it's just you're going against so many bats. But Even after they got rid of Clevenger, they have one of the best staffs in uh, recent years. So, I mean, I know it's only a 60-game season, but uh, even in a 60-game sample size, they had some of the best stats. So, Yeah. So, we there we go. We're taking, uh, we're taking Cleveland. Um, as we are going to be doing our, the, we're, 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 those are the four games we're doing for today for the, for the series. Um, what's the most interesting series to you? What's the, the series that you would really want to watch the most out of all of these? Out of the AL, I think it's probably Cleveland and New York because, like I said, you have the great pitching matchup um in the first game especially and then you have uh the great hitting of the Yankees going up against very good hitters on paper like Lindor and others on the Indians that are just having lesser seasons out there so um I think that's the most interesting um off coming off and then the next one would probably be Twins and Astros just because uh Everyone's going to be interested in hoping the Astros uh, aren't able to win, um, especially because they're under uh, 500 getting into the playoffs, and the Twins were one of the better teams in the AL, so I think they should be able to handle them. But that's just interesting because of what the Astros did to themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's for sure. I will be very happy to watch the Astros lose. Um I'm not a Yankees fan. I'm I'm hoping that Cleveland wins that. I I don't know. I've always been kind of lean to Cleveland quite a bit. Uh, that's who I'm hoping for. Of course, I'm going to be rooting for the Jays. The most interesting one for me because my team is actually in it. I'm hoping those bats light it up and they win that series. It would just be very exciting to see those young guys uh, um, get make it through against the Rays. But if you're asking my head, I'm saying no. Well, that's our full 42, boys and girls. That's the AL. We'll be having the other series tomorrow. B, please come and enjoy that fine programming because it's going to be fantastic. I'll remind you as well that we will probably be hitting some lives up evening time. You, you'll be able to find those on uh, two to three different channels. There's... Uh, uh, Sports Fanatics News, which is uh, what uh, Joe Joe Boric is, where all of his information, you can find that there. That's Fanatics with a PH, being a Philadelphia fan, you see. And uh, we have Steel Flyers. Steel, you know Steel with the beard. Great dude. Going to have Steel Flyers website coming up right now. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. But he has a YouTube channel as well that he's just starting up. So go over there and subscribe as well. We'll be going live on that channel periodically. And hopefully, if we can get it figured out, we got my channel, My NHL Pearls of Wisdom, which you can subscribe right now. Uh, which, by the way, is not just NHL. It's every sport now. I'm thinking of a name. Put down in the comment section what I can change my name to. <laughs> Maybe any... Uh, my sports pearls of wisdom or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Head over to our Patreon, too. Lots of money to be made there. Uh, ball season, we were flying first th- for the first half. Things got a little, well, we hit a little bump there, but we're back on it again. We're winning just about it. We're, we're, we're in money, money every day. Tennis picks are going through the roof. Uh, and hockey's over now, but we did well on that as well. So the Patreon app, hit it up. Uh, we'll put the uh, links down in the bottom there and you can check us out. That's our full 42, boys and girls. Have a great day and lots of love to ya. For the game.